welcome back to another Doctor Who product review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at another Robert Harrop limited edition hand painted figurine. This time one of the earlier figures from the line that is the Silurian from the 1970s third Doctor story, Doctor Who and the Silurians. It is limited edition 2500 and is still currently available on the Robert Harrop website. So if you're interested by what I show you in this review, I definitely recommend checking it out in the description below. This is in fact the fifth figure to be released in the line. I do believe we are now on to the 20th or something like that. And to be honest, I feel like this figure is one of the underdogs because I'm quite shocked that it is still in stock. As when I opened this one, along with my other ones I opened, I felt like I was really impressed by this figure. And I think like it's almost underestimated to an extent. And I'm rather excited to own it because this is in fact my first ever Third Doctor Classic Solorium because somehow I've avoided buying it in merchandise. I never got the figurine collection version or any other version of the Classic series Solorian, so this is kind of a first for this channel I'm rather excited about. So firstly, taking a look at the package in it is pretty much your average Robert Harrop design that is rather nice and stylish, so at the top you do get the Doctor Who and BBC logo, along with the diamond design with the star field stretching around to the side along the Robert Harrop logo at the very bottom, along with limited edition hand-painted figurine, and of course in the middle we do get the sticker, that this time once again is rather shiny and does read Who 5 as it's the fifth figure in the line, Solorian 1970s, Doctor Who and the Silorians, limited edition 2.5 500, and it does have the third Doctor dates at the bottom there, 1970 to 1974. And then of course on the side of the box you don't really get too much going on, just a dark blue design with a lighter Doctor Who logo at the side, and then once again exactly the same for the other side of the box. And then the back once again the Doctor Who logo along with some company details at the very bottom. Nothing on the base of the box, and then of course at the very top we do have a few more unique details about this figure. Once again with exactly the same details listed, however this time around you do get the unique unit number for this figure, the manner of which being 251 out to 500. The insides of the box now, as per usual, with this being one of the older figures in the line, we do have this polystyrene case. It does have a sticker once again at the very top that does list the unique number for this figure, and this does protect the figure on the inside that is currently not in there, but you would imagine it would go in there. We do also have a bag as well that covers the figure, making sure that it doesn't get dusty when in storage. Much like all the other Doctor Who Robert Harrop figures, this figure does also come with your standard certificate of authenticity, once again stylized with your diamond design there, along with the handwritten number 251, an image of the Slorian from the story, certified by Robert Harrop, and then on the back we do get a little bit of information about the story itself, as well as the Slorians, and a little bit of information about Robert Harrop there at the very bottom. This is one of the older figures in the line. We do also get this little cardboard base that does read Doctor Who Silurian and Limited Edition, and then a little bit of company information on the back as well that just nicely sits alongside the figure. So taking a look at the actual Silurian itself, and I absolutely love it to be honest. I think that this is a really unique design, and I'm really happy to finally have a classic series Silurian in the collection because they are a really iconic villain. Unlike the majority of the classic Doctor Who figures in the action figure line from character options, you normally tended to get a lot of your iconic Doctor Who monsters. However, for some reason, we got the Zygons, we got the Sea Devils, yet we never got the Silurians in any form whatsoever apart from the new series versions, which to be honest, I think was a bit of a loss because I think they could have done at least an army of three of them, literally exactly the same scope three times, maybe with a few different paint applications in there, and you would have quite easily sold a lot of sets because they are such a lovely design. I think that they are, once again, a really nice iconic part of the Third Doctor era. Not really seen too often either throughout the classic series of Doctor Who. I think that they had two appearances, two of which they had two different designs of costumes. Yeah, I think that these are definitely probably the best design of Solorians. They are certainly my favourite, and I think that Robert Harrop have done a really good job to actually recreate this costume in the statue format, and it has a lot of impressive paint details. So starting off at the very feet of the figure, as you can see we have this rather reptilian design of feet, almost a little bit like a crocodile or something like that. We do have these really nice claws at the very tips there. They've been painted in this rather nice fudge brown, and then we also have a few scales leading up the side there, where you have the three toes rather nicely detailed. And then this leads up to the actual legs, which once again continue that rather nice scale design, almost with different sections. As you can see we have almost this rivet section here, and then this rather checkered design there, no doubt from where they actually stuck the actual costume together within the series itself. Also, a few creases and things in there as well, much like how we did on the actual Zygon figure that I reviewed previously. I do really like the paint details on this, as you can see just shimmering it in the light there. I do have this really nice base undercoat of sort of a darker green and then a slightly lighter, almost yellow design has been applied over the top, really nicely giving it a few highlights. And then as we move up, this once again continues past the checkered design. And we also have this really nice detailing on the sides of the chest as well there, even taking a look at the back, once again a continuation of almost that like crease design around sort of the upper half of the leg and the thigh. And then we 
will also lead to this continuation of the checkered design up the very top along with this almost pointed almost spinal section which has a few nice rivets and things in there as well so again this has been given a few yellow and almost brown fudge highlights in there and i do really like the way that this has been sculpted each individual bump is of course actually sculpted to be raised above the skin front of the figure once again we get that continuation of the rather basic design of almost these shimmers here and there it looks a little bit like a dress that you would buy from one of those online retailers or something like that like asos one of those things that are in fashion these days but you do have those weird sort of ripples and things in there which is rather nice along with a few brush strokes of that yellow once again collecting in certain areas such as where the arms curve around here to replicate a little bit of shading the same at the opposite side as well we'll get a few creases and things and i see added in and then also the same where we have sort of the underarm sections where we have a little bit more of a consistency of a darker green paint app to replicate a little bit of shading the same on the opposite side as well and i also love the way that we have almost a section or a sash going up the very front there which has been painted completely in almost an orangey yellow style of paint which has been nicely raised above the actual body taking a closer look at the hands now we do get this rather unusual almost gauntlet style shaped section where we have the three fingers there and i do believe a thumb on the inside as well or they might just have three fingers i don't particularly know but yeah i think that's been rather nicely done once again with a slightly different yellow paint up over the top almost making it look a little bit crusty or almost like you don't want to touch it and then the same for the opposite side as well with the three fingers really nicely sculpted and i think that this figure has a really nice yet simplistic posture because the silorians seem to be quite an innocent species especially in doctor who and the silorians where they kind of wanted to blow up the rest of humanity sort of from what i can recall but they also were willing to live with them at the same time they kind of felt like they needed to wipe out the species up above or something like that it's pretty much the same basic plot for every single silorian story let's be honest but i think that this sort of posture that they've given it, it almost makes it look a little bit shy and a little bit timid and almost anxious and i think that the way they've got it holding its hands it's almost like he's kind of trying to reach out and be friendly almost see i do think this is kind of quite reminiscent of the silorians as seen in the story i can't really imagine them displaying this figure in any other way and i kind of like what they do with the robert harrop figures because even though they're not articulated because they kind of can't be because of the material that they're made from i think that the poses that they put them in really say a lot about the actual characterization of the personality that they're trying to recreate Taking a look at the shoulder section, once again a similar design to those hands where we've got that slightly different yellow paint app. I do love the way that this has actually been raised above the sculpt because it makes it look like the head has literally been plonked over the top of this almost rubber style body, which to be honest was probably exactly what happened within the TV show. So at the Zygon, I like the way that they've not actually shined away from making this look a little bit more effective than the actual costume seen within the story in 1970s Who. In depth look at the face, now this is arguably my favourite part of the figure because I think that they've recreated the Silorians as seen in the story impressively well here. I think that the sculpt has actually been really nicely recreated. Unlike the Zygon that seemed to be a little bit more like a caricature, it almost looks almost kind of cute and not exactly simplistic but just a little bit different, almost uncanny to what is seen within the actual story. This one seems to faithfully recreate what is seen in the episode rather well. I do love the way that the paint apps have been recreated. It has a really nice texture along the top. As you can see a similar design sort of around that cheekbone area of most of that skill design there with a few lumps here and there once again recreating an almost animalistic feature and then of course at the very front we have the lips a pouting design kind of it we almost have a glossy paint app underneath this to almost represent maybe a little bit of saliva or something in his mouth i don't know we have the ears as well on the side that have been rather nicely sculpted protruded from the face we have a few scales and things on the inside of those as well and the same on the actual back where we have the sort of small section i do believe that is on the other side as well i'm guessing those might be actually where they're here from i don't know but yeah i love the intention to detail of that and i also like the way we almost have this oxidized effect even though it's not a metal but i do like the way that we have that green brush stroke there in the side to almost make it look like mold or moss or something like that and look at the eyes once again unlike the zygon these have got a lot of detail on them because the zygon tended to be almost just a dot of black paint and it did look a little bit unusual however for the silorian there tends to be a little bit of a revision to this because you do have a lot of different paint apps in here firstly the actual sculpt along the side where you have the scales and that but the eyes are actually risen above the face i think is a very nice feature almost have that yellow design Design actually wants to get around the outline of the eyes to make them stand out a little bit more. Along the very top of the head now we do get a little bit of this fin section kind of thing where we have some different ridges here and there along this rather nice orange paint app applied to the top of this once again really nicely bringing out the detailed features of the very top of the Silurian head a little bit more when on display and then at the very top we do get the gun piece or the eye or the stunner or whatever you want to call it which is rather nicely once again protruding from the head and we do have this rather nice paint app in the middle of the orangey yellow kind of design there. 
once again where he sort of shakes his head and kills people or stuns them within the actual story, as they did many, many times, and I find quite funny when I was a little kid watching that episode. But a little bit of a brief rotation to the figure now to show off some of its details more in full. As you can see, the whole figure seems to have almost a gloss or varnish effect applied over the top to give it almost this damp shimmer, which once again, much like the Zygon, it does make it look rather moist almost in a weird way. Once again, giving it a little bit of a reflective design that's seen within the actual story, giving it a really nice overall look. To evolve the Robert Harp figures, once again we have a uniquely sculpted designed base which sort of corresponds with the habitat of the Silurians that is seen within the actual story, so we almost get this wasteland kind of section, almost like mud or something like that, which has been really nicely done. I love the way that almost ripples around the side there, a nice paint app above the top there, once again recreating a bit of a almost teal section with a few orange sections in there and a bit of a yellow paint app towards the side as well to make it look like sand or dust or mud or something like that. Then of course at the very bottom we do get the white trim as we always have with the Robert Harrop figures. Then at the very bottom of the figure, once again we get the exact same sticker that is seen on the front of the box with the same details listing Who 5 and the Third Doctor era, along this rather nice velvet section at the very bottom, making sure that when it's on display it doesn't move that much and it sort of creates a little bit of support. So giving a side-by-side -side comparison now to some of the previous figures that I reviewed on this channel from the Robert Harrop line, as you can see the Silurian is probably the smallest figure in the whole line, even from the ones I've not even reviewed yet, which makes me sort of like it even more. I think it's rather accurate to what is seen within the actual story, because they are a rather small creature, but at the same time it makes me feel oddly sorry for it, because I feel like this figure needs a lot more attention than it actually has got, because I feel like it's one of those ones that is almost overlooked, even though this is probably actually one of my favourite figures in the collection so far. I do definitely recommend this figure for what it is, especially if you're like me and don't have a classic Silurian in your collection, but pretty much entering the Silurian collection on the high tier of probably one of the most and best detailed Silurian figures or statues that you can actually get. So overall for the Doctor Who Robert Harrop limited edition hand-painted figurine statue of the Silurian as seen in the third Doctor story, Doctor Who and the Silurians, I really love it. I think the design is really nice and the sculpt is really impressive. Robert Harrop have done a brilliant job with this. I feel like it's in scale. Unlike the Zygon, I felt that some of the body parts were almost a little bit out of proportion, such as the legs seemed a little bit smaller than the rest of the body. This figure seems to be pretty much okay. I feel that like everything is within proportion. I think that the head as well is really impressively detailed, definitely by far the highlight of the figure for me. I love the way that the paint apps on the very top of this have also been done to recreate some of that almost moist texture that is seen within the actual story itself. So yeah, if you're a fan of Doctor Who and the Silurians or the Silurians in general, then I definitely recommend adding this to your collection because I would probably say this is the best, most high quality classic Silurian on the market that you can buy. This is currently priced at £50 on the Robert Hart website and it is still currently in stock. So yeah, it is a little bit on the pricey side as with the majority of the Robert Harrop figures because this is a high-end retail but what I do like is the fact that these are hand painted. It adds a little personality to these figures and a little bit of variety for each individual release. If you're an older collector with the nice and safe way to actually display these figures then I definitely recommend considering this line and adding this slurry into your collection or at least when this figure is on reduce which no doubt it will be at some point because it is one of the more older figures in the line and I do think they have a sale every so often. So yeah, overall a really nice figure and probably one of my favourites in the line so far if not the favourite along with the special weapons Dalek. Thanks for watching this review. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this product, then please do leave them in the description below and I will answer them at some point in the near future. And stay tuned for more Robert Harrop figure reviews at some point in the near future as well, along with some more Doctor Who product reviews. We've got loads on the way because I'm now officially off exams and I can do quite a few videos that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.